Now you guys really quiet down. We're not quiet down. All right, here we go. To next bi next Bible study. We're going to move on to the next Bible study. 2 Timothy 4.3. How about that one? I'll give you a minute. 2 Timothy is back towards the back. It was actually the last letter that Paul wrote in the epistle. All right, you guys all there? 2 Timothy 4.3. I hear pages rustling. All right, 2 Timothy 4.3. For the time will come when men will no longer put up with sound doctrine, but instead to suit their own desires, they'll gather around themselves a great number of teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They'll turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Is that what you've done, folks? Man, that's what, that's what too much of the modern church has done. I blame, I blame this crowd on too much of the modern church. I'm telling you they can just live, be a part of the world. It's no problem. No problem at all. Jesus said anyone who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. If you claim to be a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, get out of the line. You're, you, know, you, you're not, you haven't put your hand to the plow and not look back. You've looked back. You're wanting more of the lust that the world gives. But let me ask you, how'd that work out for Lot's wife? And here's a, here's a little Bible say. Can anybody tell me, how'd that work out for Lot's wife when she just wanted one little look back at the, at the wickedness, at the lust, at the pleasures that Sodom was there to give? And that didn't work out too well. God only allowed four people to escape Sodom, and only three of them made it out. Because there's only one thing he said, flee the city and don't look back. But Lot's wife, she just wanted one little look, look back at that, at the wickedness. And, you know, the devil's not stupid. He knows that there's pleasure in sin. The Bible even says there's pleasure in sin, but only for a season. But in the end, the wages of sin is death. Uh, and everyone, a lot of them, we're here for... Uh, we, we come to Bobcats games and concerts and Panthers games. Oh, you do? So it's not like you're just singling out the Gaga fans. No, but this is a good one. Because it's, a, it's not it's a, a big crowd and our stuff is with us. So it gives us the, gives us the ability to just create this. Yeah, it's with us. I mean, there's big of this everywhere you go. We could go to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll go to Food Lion right after our sound. No, I'm not kidding. Stuff. How about that? I'm not kidding. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to preach against cantaloupe, but I will preach against someone who promotes fornication. You never know. All right. Well, why don't you go preach down at Food Lion, and we'll take the Gaga. No, that's How about okay. That? Just leave them alone. They're only here to have fun. Well, I'll, I'll let you do the grocery crowd, okay? All right, what are we going to preach on next? Anybody got any suggestions? What, what, what's your favorite book of the Bible? How about that? You know any of them? Revelation. Uh, Revelation, there's a good one. There's a good one. Hey, all right, we got, a, we, got a, uh, <laughs> we got a request for some information out of the book of Revelation. Here we go. Out of the book of Revelation. You guys, you guys ever read a novel and you cheat and you read ahead to the end? Well, I, I read ahead to the end of this book. I got, I got some news for you. I read ahead to the end of this book. We win. The Christians win. Man, if you knew who was going to win the outcome of a football game, would you stand there rooting for the other team, throwing all your money at the wrong team? If you knew who was going to win, if you were watching a tape-delayed game, would you throw money on the losing team? No, so there's, there's, your, there's your verse, the lady who won some verses out of the book of Revelation. How about the one we already talked about? All liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. So it doesn't have to be something, what we think is some huge wicked sin like, you know, murder or rape or something like that. Just lying. Do you understand that God's standard is so high? If God gave lie. me justice, I would spend eternity in hell and have nobody to blame but myself. But God was willing to give me mercy. God was merciful, long-suffering to me. Because the first time I sinned against God, the very first time I sinned against God, I knew it was wrong to lie or to steal. And the very first time I did it, that was the moment when I went from being a, a creation of God to a child of the devil. And if I had died any time between then and when I was born again, I'd spend eternity in hell. So let's look at the quantity versus the severity of sins. Let's look at the quantity of your sins. Maybe some of you believe that. You can sin some, just not too much. Well, what's that number? Hold on. We'll get to the question and answer session in a bit. But if you believe it's the quantity of your sins that will put you into hell, what quantity? What's the quantity that you're counting on? You're making up some arbitrary number in your head and saying, well, I can sin this much, just not that much, and God's okay with me. Well, one, you haven't been keeping track of how much you sin. So you don't know if you're already way over your limit or still below it. You are. You could be already over your arbitrary limit of how many sins God will allow and not even know it. 
But the Bible says that no thief shall inherit the kingdom of God. No liar shall inherit the kingdom of God. So if you have sinned one time, only, you only have to steal one thing to be a thief. You only have to lie one time to be a liar. You only have to lust after someone one time in your life to be guilty of adultery. One sin against the holy and righteous and perfect God was enough to cast you into hell. Because if God is holy, righteous, and perfect, how many sins can He allow in His presence and still be perfect? Anybody? How about that? So folks, it's neither the quantity of your sins that's going to put you into hell, nor the severity of your sins that's going to put you into hell. What's going to put you into hell is who you've sinned against. A holy, righteous, and perfect God who created you for something better than this. You were created for something better than this, folks. Come on. Man, cry out to God and say, God, you made me. You know me. You made me for something better than this. To waste my time and my money on this, this idiocy. This debauchery. So who's willing? Who's willing? How about you, my friend? How about you? Are you willing? Who's willing? Who values their soul more than their seventy to two hundred dollar ticket? Who's willing? I go to Bible study. My parents support. So does some family now. All the big people, and I think, like, I really think they're scared. I just think this is really hurtful. And I'm, I'm just telling you that honestly, and I'm not trying to be obnoxious. And I, oh, I agree yeah. with your message. I agree with you. Then rip up your ticket and go home. If you're a Bible believing, Bible obeying, born again Christian, rip up your ticket and go home. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. Let's let's uh, let's look at some of these. Uh, let's actually let's actually look at some Lady Gaga lyrics that these Christians. Where's those quote-unquote Christians in line? Who love Lady... There's nothing wrong with Lady Gaga. Oh, I want your psycho. I want your vertical stick. I want you in my rear window. Baby, you're sick. Oh, that's, now that's, that glorifies God. Oh, if you're a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, that brings glory to God, doesn't it? Oh, man, let's see. Oh, I just want your sex. Want your sex. Take a bit of my bad girl meat. Bad girl meat. Take a bite. is you. Oh, yeah, that, there you are, Christian. That brings so much glory to God. I touch myself, can't get in hub, and in the silence of the night, through all the tears and all the lies, I touch myself and it's all right. That's beautiful. Isn't that from Psalms? Didn't she actually get that from, directly from Psalms? No, if you want to be a Bible-believing, Bible-obeying, born-again Christian, rip up your ticket and go home. Put down your ticket and whatever else you got here tonight, go home and read the Bible. Repent. Repent. Say, God, I am sorry for wasting my hard-earned money and wasting my time on that garbage. All right, let's look at some more lyrics. All right, where's all my fellow Christians, the quote-unquote Christians who paid their good money for a Lady Gaga concert? Let's see. What do we want here? Uh, oh, all we care about is pornographic girls on film and body plastic. Give me something I want to see. Television and hot blondes in odd positions. Yeah, I think that's from Proverbs, isn't it? Didn't she get that one out of Proverbs, my Christian friend? Let's see. What's some other good ones here? Let's see what these parents are going to take their little children into here. Not to mention, not to mention all the things she's actually going to be doing on stage over and above these lyrics. Oh, how about this? How about one of you parents? One of you parents, when your daughter is out on a date, when your daughter's out on a date, I'll bet you'd love to hear these words. But your mom's not home. I'm sick of laying down alone with this fever, fever, yeah. I want it all. Now I'm going to get you alone, give you fever, fever, yeah. How about play it? Play it for me, baby. Give it to me, real filthy pop. Spin that S-H, you know what? Spin it because it's fabulous. Uh, who doesn't want, who doesn't want their, their daughter going out with, going out with the male, no, who doesn't want their daughter telling their boyfriend, need a man who likes it rough, likes it rough, likes it rough. That's good stuff, mom. That's good stuff, mom. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, I think that was, I think that, I think the guy that took that one out of 2 Timothy, is that where she got that out of? That's good stuff to take your children to, folks. It's a bunch of wickedness and debauchery. If you're an adult, you know better. Shame on you. Rip up your ticket and get out of line. If you're an adult who's brought their child, you're sick. Something's wrong with you. Something is wrong with an adult who brings a child into this. 
A millstone necklace around your neck casting you into the ocean is better than what God has planned. Rip up your ticket, you and your child, rip up your ticket, go home and repent. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. Do you think... What if, people think, what if you're a Jew? Oh, if you're a Jew, I got good news for you. Your Messiah showed up 2,000 years ago. You need to be a Jew for Jesus. Be a Messianic Jew. Jesus fulfilled over 300, over 300 prophecies of the Jewish Messiah. Your, your Messiah has come, my Jewish friend. Be a Jew for Jesus. You guys think, you guys think God is fooling around? You know, was God fooling around with Lot's wife when she just took one little peek back at the city of Sodom and bam, her life was taken. She was turned into a pillar of salt. Do you think God was messing around with Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts? One lie. Ananias and Sapphira told one lie. You know, God is willing to be merciful. The fact that you've sinned against God and you're still alive means that God is merciful and long-suffering. He's willing to give you a second, a third, a four thousandth chance. But there will reach a point where God will say, I'm done with you. There will reach a point where God will say, enough, enough is enough, and your life will be demanded of you. It's like that man who had a great harvest, and he said, oh, I'll tear down my old barns, and I'll put up new ones, and I'll live for a long time on all my excess. And God said, you fool, this very night your life might be demanded, your life will be demanded of you. There will reach a day when God is done with you. You don't know how many chances God is going to give you. He's only required to give you one. God is only required to give you one chance of repentance. And each and every person in this line has already had that one chance. You're testing God. You're pushing Him. God is very serious about sin, folks. God doesn't think your sin is, is funny or cute one bit. You think your sin is really funny. You think it's really cute. Yeah, you looked in the mirror and thought you were all that. Well, God's not happy with your sin one bit. God will not turn a blind eye to a single lie, to a single act of fornication, to any drunkenness. Not a bit of it. Not one bit. You're going to have to give an account for it all. But here's the good news. The good news is, is that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And the great news is, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For it is by grace that you're saved, through faith, not of ourselves. It's a gift from God, not by works, lest any man should boast. If you're lucky, he might even forgive you. Oh, he has. Praise God, he has. God was merciful and long-suffering to me. Because I've already told this crowd that if God gave me justice, I'd spend eternity in hell. I have nobody to blame but myself. But God was merciful to me and long-suffering to me. Praise God. I humbled my heart. A oh, good thing you throw like a girl. Uh, and Jesus said, Jesus said, uh, what, what, let's see, what did Jesus say? That, uh, you know, praise, you know, blessed are you when men persecute you for his sake. Thanks a lot. I just got a blessing in heaven for that. Anybody else want to throw something at me? That'd be good. I appreciate that. Uh, that it just shows your wicked heart. Uh, here it is. Again, you got your Bibles with you. Let's open them up to Romans 6, verse 13. And it says, Do you not know? Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you're slaves to the one you obey, either to sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness? So what do you want to be a slave to? You want to be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to which leads to righteousness. You need to start loving yourself and loving God. If you actually oh, love yourself, how much do you hate yourself? Oh, you hate your own soul. <laughs> you, you people hate your, own, your very own soul by the way you act. They claim to know God, but by their actions, they deny Him. Man, it's like being back on Bourbon Street here. What I mean, is this nonsense? Oh yeah, I bet you love Bourbon Street. 